This is Twit. We have a story here from Ars Technica how a user by the name of LOE Vanderbeeken found a vulnerability in Netgear and Linksys routers. Now, these are the DSL slash router slash wireless combinations that you see when you, you buy service from uh, your major ISP. He scanned ports on his family's WAG200G, which is a Linksys combination device, and found it responding to port 32764, which is strange because normally nothing lives at port 32764. Now, he also found by searching on the internet that other products from Netgear and Linksys responded to that very same port. And so it got him thinking, what's going on there? What services are living beneath that, that 3276? He then downloaded the Linksys firmware, reverse engineered it, and found an interface listening there that allowed him to send commands to the router without the need to authenticate as an administrator. Now, off the bat, let me drop this over to you, Chibert. How bad is it that there's an undocumented listening port that furthermore allows people to just send commands that are automatically executed without any sort of authentication whatsoever oh man this is this is a security nightmare uh the worst part is is you know you, you got to keep in mind i i don't think these guys write the base code so the the real the operating system for this thing uh i have a feeling that we've got someone that made a mistake and left a diagnostic port or or something like that open in this particular rev, and I think that's what we're going to find out when uh, someone finally fesses up to where what happened. Right. Yeah. That's that strikes me that this is probably something that was left in there during the testing phase, maybe a way for people to use a uh, like an app to get into the router and configure it. Maybe something that's left there for the technician who's actually diagnosing a modem from within. Because an addendum to the story is that this is not a port that is accessible from the outside world. So I couldn't just start hitting people's internet connection, their WAN connection, and try to get in. I'd actually have to be on the inside of their network. But it still is a little disconcerting because Curtis, we've seen these sorts of exploits used before. They can only be reached from the inside but what happens is any compromised computer inside the network can then start hammering on that port from inside the network, right? That's right. It's, it's those horizontal vulnerabilities that start to become more and more important when you have vulnerabilities like this. As you say, all it takes is one badly compromised machine inside the firewall and the entire network is at risk especially when you have things like this. And and again, I'm sure that Netgear is going to be saying, hey, you can only get at it from inside. It's not a big deal. That's true as long as you're sure that inside is secure. And we've passed the point at which you can assume that inside your network is secure. These days, you have to assume that attacks, that exploits, that vulnerabilities are going to come from 360 degrees.